it might as well be Oshkosh. Joining me is John Monnet, yeah. president of Sonics Aircraft. Yeah, it just has a roof over it. It has a roof over it. Yeah, it's, it's not Wisconsin, it's Texas. No, that's, that's right. right. <laughs> but John, interestingly, Sonics has kind of gotten into the, the unmanned aircraft business. What made you go from being one of the premier producers of kit airplanes in the country to say, we need to be in this unmanned business. Well, actually, uh, the genesis for this is a long time ago. Actually, the first show like this I attended in 1985. Mm -hmm. And uh, it was the year that Ballard brought the first films of, or film, the first video of the Titanic. It was mm -hmm. the first public display, which was really interesting. But I was there to uh, acquire information on the systems that fly the airplanes. We had a a little airplane called a Moni back then, it was a little motor glider that was a natural for an, a, 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 for a, a, an unmanned vehicle, mm -hmm. but found out that there just wasn't the technology for it um, uh, then. So we're, we've kind of come full circle, and it's kind of funny because uh, I started out flying model airplanes like everybody else, and mm -hmm. radio control back in 59, uh, I had my first radio control uh, airplane, and I'm kind of coming full circle now. Uh, what does it take to convert um, one of the Sonex aircraft into an unmanned vehicle? Well, there's a lot of, in, in the systems, it, it seems relatively simple and it actually is because our airplanes are pretty versatile. Because they're metal, mm -hmm. uh, it, it doesn't take a lot of special, we can, we can put fittings on, we can change the control systems, uh, you know, to servos instead of push rods, etc. So, uh, that transition is, is, is really interesting. Of course, uh, we have uh, our Taros here mm -hmm. uh, that we uh, built for uh, NASC and uh, that is going to progress into a B model uh, mm -hmm. version of that and then we have some other airplanes that are uh, based on earlier designs that, that make a lot of sense and probably will outperform almost everything here. Now are you building basically from the kits that you use for manned airplanes or are they scaled down versions? No, actually the Taros is, is a version of our Xenos mm -hmm. uh, motor glider so many of the parts are interchangeable but mm -hmm. uh, there are certain different uh, requirements for the unmanned vehicle, uh, camera mounts, uh, mm -hmm. you know, f larger fuel. So we're trading uh, uh, protoplasm for fuel yeah, okay. in those airplanes. So they have a long uh, endurance. But, but the weight exchange, it's just an exchange. Yes, you exactly. Take the pilot out and put right. it next to the airplane. The airplane isn't any heavier at gross mm -hmm. than the normal and uh, the, the, uh, aer the aero uh, V that we have, uh, the turbocharged aero mm -hmm. V is uh, adequate for that airplane. But I also saw that there's kind of like a little subsonics, the, the jet version of, of, a, of right. a UAV. And of course these are concept deals that need right. to be developed, but it's, it's a natural. The, the jet version, of course, it has to go fast because it's designed as an acquisition airplane, mm -hmm. uh, meaning uh, that if the fleet, for instance, is out with a carrier fleet, uh, it's used to practice uh, the, their radar acquisition to mm -hmm. see if a cruise missile is coming, whatever, so it has to go fast. Uh, and again, we're, tra we're trading fuel and uh, putting another engine on it, uh, so it'll, it'll, it'll fly in the 350 mile an hour range. How are people accepting um, in, in this community basically what has traditionally been a manned aircraft company? I, I, you know, it remains to be seen, I guess. Uh, you know, it just makes so much sense that, uh, mm -hmm. I mean, we're not making a, 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 a UAV out of, say, a Cessna 172 or something like mm -hmm. that. But, uh, our airplanes are, are especially like the Xenos is a natural because first it's a motor glider to start with. Mm -hmm. uh, it can operate at high altitude uh, and with the changing the fuel, etc., you know, it has a really long lighter time, 17 hours. So it's, you know, it's, it's very suited for the mm -hmm. kind of job that needs to be done. Of course, Aurora Flight Sciences has been doing that for years with a with a DA the DA forty two oh. that they converted into an optionally piloted vehicle. Uh huh. And so, do you see that in, in the future for Sonics that yeah, might be optionally piloted? Yes, absolutely. In in areas where uh, it has to operate, it can be done uh, with a pilot in the in the cockpit. And uh, mm -hmm. uh, we haven't configured the first one that way because the first one, of course, is is going through testing and and uh, we're advancing on that. But it, that makes absolute sense. Will you eventually build specific UAVs? I mean, yeah. Obviously, you're coming into you're, you're coming into this from from the airplanes that you have, but you're looking at right. Even the Block Four airplane, which is uh, mm -hmm. uh, the next version of the Tiger Shark, is really purpose built, but it, mm -hmm. it's based on an airplane like the Moni. 
Right. Uh, but a lot different, you know, retracting gear and uh, uh, it's a shoulder wing instead of a low wing, etc. But the basic geometry is based on the same thing, but it's, when, it's designed for a different job. When you go to flight test one of the UAVs, what's, what is it, how does that process differentiate from flight testing a, um, a manned airplane? Well, that's where NASC comes in. You know, we're, we're building airframes. Uh, mm -hmm. they, have the, they have the technology and the knowledge to fly these airplanes. Uh, they, they even have a training program to, mm -hmm. to train uh, what what are unmanned vehicle pilots and uh, so they their system is is that and what we're doing is upgrading their airframe so they have even mm -hmm. more capability so uh, it's, it's not hard it's interesting uh, <laughs> and uh, I suppose we're gonna we're gonna find a lot of that out because we're right now we're in the baby step uh, uh, mode is all of that taking place at your facility in Oshkosh no it actually will be at a flight test uh, facility out mm -hmm. out east what is the mission for uh, a Sonex-based unmanned aircraft? Well, it's a, there's a lot of only not only military, mm -hmm. but uh, you know they they see it as a, a pipeline, on station, uh, even a border patrol kind of uh, operation. Mm -hmm. So uh, that can be tethered to to other uh, acquisition uh, vehicles that. Uh, work pretty well, so it's, it's it's versatile. And the thing about the the taro, the taros that we have here is it's, it can be configured in many ways that, mm -hmm. say, other very famous uh, UAVs uh, can't easily be changed. Mm -hmm. So it can swap missions easily. Well, it's very interesting stuff, John. And it, I know it's been a, a something of a departure, even though you said it's been kind of a long time coming. But um, it's one of the things that. I'm, I'm hoping, being out of the manned aircraft world, that there are things that you learn working on, in the unmanned realm that then you can transfer and maybe help push the manned aircraft realm forward a little bit as well. Right. Uh, yeah, it's just, it's, you know, all, all of my airplanes and, and, uh, that we've built over the years have, have always been niche airplanes. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, we've done motor gliders, we've, we've done uh, uh, little, little gliders, we've done racers. and and uh, the normal Sonics, which is kind of an average airplane. Mm -hmm. And uh, what, we, we, you know, what we find out with the new things, the jet and, and beyond, uh, will bring that, that knowledge back to, to our, our mainstay of business. Well, we certainly look forward to seeing you in July. We'll all be in Wisconsin, so yeah. we'll, we'll, well look I'll be there. To I'm always there. I know you're, you're always just right across the <laughs> yeah, airfield, so right. yeah. that'll be an easy thing. Yeah. But John, thanks yeah. very much for taking some time to talk with us. Interesting stuff you've got going on with Sonex Good. in the unmanned world. So thanks very much. Thank you very much. Aero News Network's coverage of the Association for Unmanned Vehicle Systems International's Exponential 2017, live from Dallas, Texas, is brought to you in part by the following sponsors. Let Patrick Neal & Associates provide the legal expertise needed to navigate the commercial UAS industry. Whether it be waivers, exemptions, operational plans, or other issues, we can provide the guidance you need to keep flying and building your successful UAS operation www.droneattorneys.us In collaboration with NASC, introducing Sonix Aerospace, bringing you the Taros Group 4 UAS, the redesigned Tiger Shark Block 4, and the Subsonix Twinjet UAS, all derived from flight-proven manned systems, not concepts, real aircraft. More at sonixaerospace.com. Continental Motors Group. Manned and unmanned, Continental has been a pivotal part of aviation and aerospace history and wants to be a part of your mission. Gas or diesel, certified or experimental, Continental is investing in your future. www.continentalmotors.aero